Okay, the biblical truth of our hymns. Today, we're going to, to do a hymn that I don't like. And as we get into the hymn, I'll tell you why I don't like it. Personal opinion. But there's a warning. Personal opinion. But we'll get into that. We're going to look at today the old rugged cross. Uh, Methodist George Bernard wrote the first verse of the old rugged cross in Michigan. And it was a response to ridicule from a revival meeting. And from going to Chicago to Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, the evangelistic meetings of the French Church from December 29th to January 12th, 1913. During the meetings, Reverend Bernard finished the old rugged cross and on the last night of the meeting, Bernard and Marias performed it as a duet before the full house. And the hymn was a sentimental popular song from the verse chorus pattern of six, eight times. And it speaks of the writer's adoration of Christ and Calvary. Bernard retired to Reach City, Michigan, and the town maintains a museum dedicated to his life and ministry. That's the bottom of the list, but that's one of the reasons. A memorial also has been created in Youngstown at Lake Park Cemetery. A plaque, the first performance of the song, stands in the front of Friends Church in Wisconsin. And when we move over here, more information. The Old Rugged Cross has been a country gospel favorite. It's been sung by Ernest Tubbs, Al Green, Andy Griffin, and Murray, Brad Presley, John Berry, George Jones, Eddie Aaron, Jane Reeds, Johnny Cash, June Carter, Kevin Max, Mahia Jackson, Patsy Klein, Loretta Lynn, Ray Price. Got some real Christians here. Tennis Earl Ford, Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, the Oak Ridge Boys, the Slater Brothers, Willie Nelson. I mean, grab a pot, smoke a dope, and don't pay the government. I mean, that's what I'm told, in my opinion, I heard about him. Uh, George Beverly Shee, and so when we look at outside the comments we make of these people, I mean, I don't know who's saved or not, but, you know, there's always people out there that think that God is pleased if I come out with a country uh, music album or I come out with a Christian album amongst my other filthy albums that God will approve of our Christian album, Get Us Into Heaven, by one album, I guess, or something like that. So, it's about Calvary. It's about the cross, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And as we look at it, I will show to you why I I don't sing this hymn when it's in the church. So, I will not sing it. Personal opinion, but I'll show you my personal opinions. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Well, the biblical fact is they nailed Jesus to the cross, and then they put the cross up on the hill. And they took the cross down and laid Jesus in the manger. The emblem of suffering and shame, true, true. And I love that old rugged cross. I mean, I love that old cross. You love the cross. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't love the instrument of torture of my Savior. What if, just a cruel thing, what if Jesus Christ died in an electric chair? Would you love the electric chair? Listen, that cross is gone. Who knows where that cross is today, even if it's not a pile of dust. I don't love the cross. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it is Christ that died on that cross, but, I mean, we're putting a little relicism here. We're putting a little idolatry. And every church you go into, Baptist, they have a cross. Are we not to not make 
imagery and idolatry? When you say you love an item, that becomes an idol. That's what the Bible says. Where the dearest and best for all the world, for the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Where the dearest, the cross, and the best, the cross. I love that old cross, where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners. Say, okay, Jesus. So you love the cross, but then you talk about the dearest and best, Jesus Christ. Man, he's better than dearest. He's better than the best. Best? It's good. It's best. It's better. So you put Jesus on the second Rome of ladder that should be the greatest, the wonderful, where lost sinners were slain. True. And we'll look at the reframe, the chorus line after. Oh, that rugged cross, so despised by the world. I thought Christ was despised by the world. I thought the word was despised by the world. We just had Saturday where the police came, was called on us, preaching the gospel. Not preaching the cross, preaching the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. And they did not want to hear that. They don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to hear about heaven and hell. It wasn't a cross. People come up to us all the time. They'll pull out their, their necklace out between their shirt and it shows the cross of Jesus, Jesus hanging on it. Like I said, you go into churches, there's a cross of Jesus. You got people who go around this nation carrying a cross with roller skates at the end of it, going all around, you know, I'm doing... We've been events where they've been canceled because we've been there with the gospel. You know, they do the, the, uh, the passion of Christ and the cross of Christ. And, they, and what happened to Jesus Christ? I'm going to say, personal opinion, that the old rugged cross here is to be more valued than Jesus Christ, who died on that cross. It's not the cross that was that died according to the scriptures. It's not the cross that was buried. It's not the cross that resurrected itself by the power of God according to the scripture. It is Jesus Christ. That cross is gone. I read in heaven that there's the ark, there's the incense altar, there is the uh, the tabernacle set up, the heavenly tabernacle. I don't see no cross in heaven. I go so far as to say sometimes, I mean, if you put your honor like this hem does upon the cross, you're making idolatry, and I probably just made some enemies right now. I just probably made some unfriends. But when I've got a hymn like this before me, it's all about the cross, about the cross, about the cross, and not about Jesus. There's a problem. So despised by the world. Now, Jesus Christ is despised by the world. Has a wondrous attraction for me. Who? The cross or Jesus? I'm attracted to Jesus Christ. I'm looking for the blessed hope, which is Jesus Christ. I'm not looking for the hope of the cross. I'm not ever looking for the cross. I am not ever adoring myself with the cross. But the one who suffered and died on it. For the dear Lamb of God. Oh, okay, now we get to Jesus. Left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. Well, dark Calvary was only at one moment of time when Christ cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabecti, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the only dark time on that cross. And then we'll get to the refrain afterwards. In the old, in that old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, God's blood, Acts 20, 28, such a wonderful beauty I see. When have you seen the cross of Jesus with the blood of Jesus stained on it? Where is this cross? And probably the Catholics have got a realm on it. You know, we've got fragments and goofles and, and relics of this cross and all that. 
if you could put the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of God, Acts 20, 28, under a microscope, it would just blow your mind. Because there is no human blood that, that flowed through Jesus, but the blood of God. And the fact is that God had to sacrifice. God had to suffer. God had to be beaten. God had to be thorn. God had to have his beard pulled. God had to bend his brutality of man that he created. That God had to be nailed to that cross. And that blood that was shed is beautiful. I wish there was another way that Christ could have saved my soul. And that was the only way. I guess you would rank up there if you were to be a person to say that Christ died on Friday on the cross. Uh, it would have been a good good Friday, even though he didn't die on a Friday. And it's not good. Now, it's, the, it's my soul that is saved by what happened on the, on the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. But it's not my, hey, hey that's great, wonderful, thank you. It's, he's broken. He was bruised. He was mistreated. He was beaten. He was tortured. That is not good. Now that is good as far as my soul going to heaven, but that's not good. For twas on that old cross, old cross, old cross, Jesus suffered and died, true. Jesus suffered and died according to scriptures. Well, at least we got Jesus here, but we got more old cross than we got Jesus. To pardon and sanctify me. True. True. But this hymn is dedicated mostly to the cross. My opinion, I'm going to put it as idolatry. You are lifting up the instrument that God nailed Jesus to over the Jesus that was nailed to the cross. I mean... I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know how you're going to plead out of it. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. You're not going to be. Wait a minute. The cross said, I am the way, the true, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but me. The cross didn't say that. Jesus Christ said that. And we are to fo follow our pattern, not after the cross, but after Jesus. Now, there are other crosses out there. Jesus said, we're to bear our own cross. But you're going to be true to the cross? The old rugged cross of Jesus Christ? What, what does that mean? Maybe you're going to look for a relic. How about to the Lord Jesus Christ, I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. What is this ridiculous nonsense? It, the cross was glad. I mean, the, the cross was taken down talking to the other two. God, I was so good. I had Jesus on me today. You just had a, a sinner that never repented. You had a sinner that repented. That was good. But me, I had Jesus Christ. He suffered. Now, look at me. I got God's blood all over me. Ah, isn't that great crosses? Really? People, you're singing hymns that you're not reading the words. I guess the musical instruments and all that. I don't know. Remember, Satan was the first music director ever to be before man was ever to be. Satan was in charge of the choir of the angels in heaven, sat above God's throne. As a, as a, I would think, am I saying this hymn is a, a satanic? No, I'm saying a lot of these hymns. Then he'll call me someday. Jesus will call me to home far away. Where his glory forever I'll share. Now it said. It's shame and reproach. It's. Jesus is not in it. And Jesus will call me home one day. Glory to God. Whether I die. Be absent from the body. And present with the Lord. And then the rapture. 
that, you know, my dead body will go up or if I'm alive, my body will go up. I will go to a place where there is no longer no cross ever to be found. But, you know, you look at your church and there is the cross. You're not going to find the cross. In heaven. It's not there. I don't read it. So on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. We don't know what that cross looked like. I'm an, I, I, opinion, personal opinion, I would believe that the most torturous thing could have been for Jesus Christ for the cross would be. It would have splinters and slivers, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of wood. Some say dog woods. I don't know. You can look at me according to scriptures. If I apply scriptures, I would say an oak, but I can't say that scriptural. If I make any documentation of what kind of wood that was, I would be ashamed because I would not study. The emblem of suffering and shame. Suffering, shame, emblem, and glory is that Jesus Christ still has the nail pierced hands and feet and the hole in the side. Thomas, reach in there and poke your finger, uh, poke your hand through, through my side. See my hands and my feet. They still got the nail prints, he, he told Thomas. And then when we go to glory, those nail prints are going to still be it. And maybe the prints on his, on, his, on his forehead and on his head from the, the thorns. Maybe the other marks on his back. But there's no cross in heaven. There's no emblem. And the emblem I would, I would have for Christ today with the scripture, with scripture is the nail pierced hands, Thomas. Jesus didn't tell Thomas, oh, see the cross. Look at, look how beautiful it is. See the holes, Thomas. And emblem of suffering and shame. I love that old rug. I don't love that cross. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Where dearest and best, you see, Jesus is just the dearest and the best, but he loves the cross. And they got a museum for him. And they got the old rugged cross, they got an old rugged cross, I have told, kind of statue, whatever, you know. Idolatry. People go take their pictures and look at me with the cross and the old rugged cross. Oh, this is great. You know, I don't know if they got souvenirs or anything like that, but that's idolatry. When you go visit the ark and you get your pictures of the ark and you buy the bumper stickers, I visit the ark or I, I, I went to the Bible museum. I went to all these things. That's idolatry. When we get to New Jerusalem, there's no super air stand. There's no camera. We're the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners slain. Christ is above the dearest and above the best. Is there a word above the greatest? Yes, he's God Almighty. On that old rugged cross, so despised by the world. No, the, the cross is not despised. The one who suffered and died on it, the word of God suffered and despised. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That has nothing to do with a cross. Has a wondrous traction to me. For the dear Lamb of God. Oh, we got Jesus. Left his glory above to bear it uh, to dark Calvary. And the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine. Stained with the blood of God. Should have been. Such a wonder beauty I see. Yeah, that's it's gross. You know the putty, pussy, bloody, beaten, black, uh, black. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what? I can't think of the word. Uh, scars, um, bruises. That's what I'm thinking. Bruised, black eyes, bruising. Where his back is described as, as a farmer's field that has been plowed. 
There's no beauty that we should desire him, Isaiah 53 says. This guy, beauties in, in, a, in a Jesus Christ has been beaten and abused and relishes and loves this cross. Nanu, nanu, na. Where was I? For twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. That's true. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Again, you're going to be true to the cross, not Jesus. It was the cross again that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but mine. No. It was Jesus Christ. Nowhere does Paul say, have the example of the cross. Be true to the cross and you, you get a crown. No. Be true to Jesus Christ. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. I know Jesus Christ had to suffer and die again, but to, to be glad in that? Isn't that kind of morbid? I want to, you know, I can just picture a guy who's been out in the battlefield. Yeah, my friend stepped on a landmine for me, and I, I, if it wasn't for him doing that, I wouldn't be alive here. I'm just so glad his his guts were in the tree and his guts were over there. And I saw his heart over there and his le one leg was there. One finger was up there. It was his glory to see his body all over the place. Let's put the him in reality, shall we? It's the beauty of salvation, but there's no beauty that we should desire him. And definitely no beauty in him to being, being tortured. Because of our sins and the chastisement and the brutality of God placed upon him because of our iniquity. And you're going to say that's good? God had to lay it all out on Jesus for the wrath of sin. You know, God just didn't take a yardstick to Jesus behind. He took whips, cat of nine tails, thorns. He took nails. He took the brutality of, of Roman soldiers beating. He took the brutality of the servants of the high priest beating Jesus Christ. Beating him. Pulling his beard out. And you think that's beautiful? I call it my salvation, but... <laughs> and that he's scarred for life. Because of what me... Because of my sin. Because of my iniquity. Now there's a beauty of salvation. But the appearance. Then he'll call me someday. To my home far away. Glory. Heaven. New Jerusalem. Forever. Where there is no cross. There's the wounds. There's the scars. I said if I already lost friends. May those who are saved will say, you know what? Maybe, yeah. Where the glory forever I'll share. Where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. I'll cherish Jesus Christ. I'll love and honor the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is gone. Wherever it is, it's gone. But Jesus Christ is not gone. Jesus Christ is alive. Him I will cherish. Till my trophies at last I lay down. Oh, trophies. That's something else you honor. Hey, see this? I got this for first place. I got this for second place. Look how great. Is, is he talking about rewards or crowns? Maybe. They're not trophies. They're called, I don't know what he's talking about there. Is he talking about earthly trophies? Is he talking about heavenly rewards of crowns or I, I don't know where you got trophies from. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I, I guess he's got other gods. I guess he's got idolatry that needs to be put down. 
Listen, when you confess your sins, he's able and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you put those trophies right now, if you confess your trophies and, and put them to the blood of Jesus Christ, they're already put down. But if you put your love, your trust, and your faith in the cross, those trophies you have can't be forgiven because the cross is not the blood and you're going to have to stand. When they got a museum, museum in your name, in your honor, and they got a cross set up for the honor, and they got a plaque for, the, for this hymn that you wrote all about the cross. I will cling to the old rugged cross. Wait a minute. To my trophies I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross. There is no rugged, old rugged cross in heaven. How are you going to cling to it? I'm going to lay my trophies down, but I'm going to put my arms around the imagery, idolatry of the cross. I probably just lost friends again. If he's talking about going to heaven and he's laid everything down, he's going to heaven, he's not going to, you're not going to put your arms around the old rugged cross because there is no old rugged cross in heaven. It's gone. The Ark of the Covenant's not gone. And we're not going to wrap, Moses is not going to wrap his arms around the, oh, it's good to see you again. No, no. And exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, boy. So those trophies there were earthly monuments of how great I've done things. First place, second place, blue ribbon, red ribbon, whatever they are. And when I cling to the old rugged cross, I will exchange it someday for a crown. So he is saying in this hymn, in order to get a crown, you got to love and honor the old rugged cross. Chapter and verse, please. Where is clinging to the old rugged cross, you'll get a crown. You'll get a crown for witnessing to lost people. You'll get a crown for helping Christians grow. There's a evangelist, ministry, pastor crown for those involved in the work of the ministry of the authority of the ministry. There's a martyr's crown. If you are killed in, in the word of God, not in the word of the cross, but if you are killed serving the Lord, doing right, there's a martyr's crown. And a fifth crown, there's a crown for just being faithful. Clinging to the old rugged cross and saying, I'm going to get a crown for that, singing that, that I don't see that in the Bible. And you'll get people thinking, oh, I just love the cross. You know what I mean? The cross that hangs from my breast? You mean the cross that hangs from my rearview mirror? You mean the cross that's on the, on, on the back of the wall of the preacher where he preaches? You mean the cross that's on the stained glass windows? You mean the tattoo of the cross I got on the arm or the leg or the buttock, whatever you want to put it? You mean if I cross my heart, hope to die? Clinging to the old rugged cross is not going to get you a crown. Service and loving the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I love the old rugged cross. I love Jesus Christ. And I try to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. There's more to the cross to be a Christian. There is the sufferings of Christ, according to the scriptures, there's the burial of Christ. When they grabbed the dead body of Jesus, they didn't take the cross. They left the cross. And when he came out the third day, according to scriptures, three days and three nights, he wasn't on that cross. He didn't carry that cross. There was no cross. There was him. And when he appeared in the upper room with the, with the, the apostles and Thomas was not there the first time, there was no cross. There was him. And when he appeared the second time and Thomas was a mix of he said, Thomas, look at the hole, behold the hole, not behold the cross. Go in all the world and preach the gospel, not just preach the cross. 
Now, I'm not saying the cross of Jesus is, is ineffective. I'm not saying, oh, there's no symbology there of the cross, but curses is the man that it hangeth in a tree. That cross is a curse. It's a curse, Isaiah 53, that Jesus Christ took for us. Cursed is the man that hangeth on a tree. That cross is called a tree. And that curse, that man, this man did write, I love the old rugged cross. You love the curse. Now, how about the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ? It was Constantine that saw the big cross in the sky. It led to the Catholic mess. I guess some ways, and I've got to be careful what I say here, but I mean, somebody could take this and splice it. To me wrong. I mean, some ways uh, of the Jehovah Witnesses that the cross and... The flag and all that is imagery and idolatry. I believe that. Sorry. And when people come up to me and they show, their, show me their cross and Jesus is on it, I say, he's not on that cross no longer. And they'll show me a metal cross, you know, maybe no Jesus, say, it was a wooden cross. And he's not, and that has nothing to do with anything no more. As far I, what I mean doesn't have anything to do with anything more. It is the third part of three parts of the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. There is the cross. That's gone. He was placed in the tomb <coughs> and sealed and rock. Why don't you? The old rugged rock. I'll cling to the old rugged rock. That rock sealed Jesus Christ. And to the seal upon the old rugged cross. And the soldiers that stood outside. And it was kicked aside when the women came. To the old rugged rock. That's only two parts of the three parts. The third part of the gospel, Jesus Christ arose from the grave three days and three nights according to the scripture. In the cross, in the cross. Up from the grave he arose. Yes. Christ died on the cross. Christ died on a tree. But if God wanted to honor that cross, it would be still around. But it's a relic. And yet, Jesus Christ is the Savior. My opinion when the old rugged cross, and we're going to sing the old rugged cross 87, 32, whatever, I don't. I close the book because I don't even want to read the words. Now, listen, we've done many hymns. We've done many hymns. And I can't pull it up right now. And there's been many I liked. And there's been many I don't like. Now, this next hymn here, let's look at the next hymn real quick. It's, it's the cross of Jesus. Cross of Jesus, cross of sorrow, where the blood of Jesus was shed. Perfect man on thee did suffer. Perfect God on thee has bled. That's not about, it. yeah, there's the cross as the instrument of what God used for the death of Jesus, but it's about Jesus. Here the king of all the ages, throne in light, er world could be. Robed in mortal flesh is dying, crucified by my by crucified by sin for me. Yes, Christ is dying that cross, but what is the center point of this hymn? Christ, not the cross. Oh mysterious condescending. Oh ab ab I hate when they put the words in abandonment, sublime, you know, when 
Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Very God himself is bearing all the sufferings of time on the cross. But what is the subject of the cross of Jesus? Not the cross, but Jesus. From the holy, 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 we adore thee. O most high, most high, excuse me. Down the earth's blaspheming voices and the shouting of crucify. I like this hymn. <laughs> It's William John Sparrow Simpson, 1887. I like this one. Again, yeah. it's not about a piece of wood. It's about the Lord God Savior that died on a piece of wood. I mean, the old rugged cross, why don't you say the old rugged ark that was made of wood? Oh, that's right. They built that in, in America. They built their own ark. Go in all the world and build an ark and charge people with missions. And the only thing we know about the ark is it had three stories. It was this cubic by that cubic by this cubic. It had windows above and had a door. And seven by two male and female of the clean animals and just pairs of male and female of the unclean animals. Cross of Jesus, cross of sorrow, where the blood of Christ was shed. Perfect man on thee did suffer. Perfect God on thee did, has bled. Now look at that. Now there's a hymn about the cross. But it's not about the cross. It's about the man that died on the cross. Not only about the man that died on the cross, about God that died on the cross. You can sing about the cross, but don't make the cross the subject. And he did. I love, where is it? I love the old cross. And you can't say that's figurative, imaginative, all that. No, it's not by this hymn. Because he's talking about that piece of wood. Wood be, is one of the things that burns up at the judgment seat of Christ for Christians. The old rugged cross, I went, I closed the book. Cross of Jesus, I'll sing that. I'll sing that. I may have lost some friends, but all they live godly, all those that preach. Listen, the truth is not wanted. The truth is not loved. That's why I said my opinion. I don't believe the old rugged cross should be sung. I believe it puts more adoration to the piece of wood than it does Jesus Christ manifesting the flesh.